Did you like shut down production on that scene where everyone was like, wait, hold on, what? Yeah, basically, <laughs> basically everybody was like, wait, for real? And I'm like, yeah. And the, the, somehow the fans, they picked up on that like really fast. I feel like some of them figured it out before the scene was ever even released. Because mm. <laughs> so, they started asking me and interviews were asking me too. And I'm like, no, that's that's true. Like I actually went to school to be a pastry chef. <laughs> Cassidy Lux. I am a mainstream porn star. I've been in the industry for uh, two and a half years already. <laughs> Can't believe that. And um, what was the other part of that? No, you pretty much got it. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> Um, so you've been a little in bit of a short term memory. Yeah. So I'm <laughs> it's fine. I, I saw you on Instagram. You were out on a beat or out on a boat on the ocean having a good time. I don't blame you at all. I'm doing just... that right now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm not going to take up too much of your time. I'll let you get back no, to your floor. No, it's all good. <laughs> this was in the schedule. So please. Yeah, fair. <laughs> uh, you've, you've been in the industry for two years and change. And what's kind of wild, and I'm not sure if uh, this is much of public knowledge or you talk about it before but like yeah two and a half years a long time and been making waves in the industry pastry chef veterinarian and working in the executive world before you got into adult film yeah yeah How i came from the traditional background <laughs> okay so um, the pastry chef thing, that is, that is so funny because that actually came out from a reality king scene. Nobody knew that, but I actually got casted for Baking with Babes. Okay. And um, we actually shot that scene super organically. Like there really wasn't much of a script or anything to follow. They just, they really wanted us to just be organic and have sex. And uh, so organically, I had mentioned as I was showing everyone how to make pie crust, I was accurately showing them how to make pie crust. <laughs> and I said, I actually went to school um, to become a pastry chef, which was one of the first few things that I was like, you know what, this might be a career path for me. Um, but then with the schooling, I learned that pastry chefs, they wake up at like three o'clock in the morning to start work. And I was like, mm, this is going to be a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> but I did complete the schooling and I, I would have been able to go out and do my own thing as a pastry chef. Uh, but yeah, that the shift was not for me. <laughs> did, did you like shut down production on that scene where everyone was like, wait, hold on, what? Yeah, basically, basically, everybody was like, wait, for real? And I'm like, yeah. And the, the, somehow the fans, they picked up on that like really fast. I feel like some of them figured it out before the scene was ever even released. Because mm. <laughs> so, they started asking me and interviews were asking me too. And I'm like, no, that's that's true. Like I actually went to school to be a pastry chef. <laughs> that's so wild. So. And, and then uh, like a trained vet, like a veterinarian. Yeah, so I um, actually, as a, a vet tech, while I was in school, uh, my senior year, I actually, I had already had all my credits in, um, and the school that I went to offered what they called a co-op program, so I actually went to high school part-time, and I worked a job part-time, so half the half the week I would go to school, half the week I would go to my actual job. Right. And I was working for a local animal shelter. I've been plant-based for 16 years, so I have insane love for animals. Mm. So I was working at the animal shelter as a vet tech, uh, working with chronically ill cats that, mm, well, they weren't so much adoptive, so they basically lived with us because they were just chronically ill, a lot right. of upkeep. Occasionally they would find homes, but right. it was kind of challenging. So yeah, I kind of built my veterinary skills through the animal shelter. And then after that, I moved on to actual vet clinics. And I was also managing a doggy daycare at the time too. So I was going between a vet clinic and a doggy daycare. So I actually have like eight years invested in the animal industry. And then I went to the like executive corporate America side of animal care. 
um, because uh, sadly, working with animals is not a well-paying job. It's more of a self-rewarding type of job, but uh, we live in a really expensive time of life right now. So, well, this was beyond now, but it, it wouldn't have, you know, allowed me to branch off onto my own and move me out of my parents' house and stuff. So I went to the corporate level and I moved on to an animal supplies distribution center. Mm -hmm. And basically I was their accounts coordinator. So I would qualify people to do business with us. So people would say, um, I want to be a, a client of your business. And then basically I would just put them through an interview process and say yes or no. So yeah. So I was, I was in charge of uh, accepting new clients or turning them down. <laughs> ba basically like a high level recruiter or... Uh, basically, yeah, yeah I was yeah. recruiting people to do business with us. Well, that's very cool. Yeah. yeah. And then the pandemic happened and I was like, I actually hate what I'm doing. And um, <laughs> I was already doing OnlyFans at mm. the time and I loved it. So uh, basically I was like, well, all these people during this pandemic are reaping the benefits of all the time they've already put into their jobs and stuff. So I'm getting fired. <laughs> so I got myself fired and became a full blown sex worker. <laughs> <laughs> you got yourself deliberately like. I'm I did. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> How? <laughs> um, basically I was base. I was just doing enough. Oh. Um, but I actually, and, and this is true, I actually had proof of workplace harassment. So I asked, I got them for that too, because okay. that was true. But you know, it was, I was kind of like working a normal job. So it was like, I was at their mercy or basically, yeah. So I was like, eh, I don't know, like maybe I shouldn't. And then I was just basically was just like, you know what? There is enough benefits going on during this time. And OnlyFans was really good for me because OnlyFans was just popping off. It was not highly saturated. Um, so it was it was providing me a livable income. So mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? I'm getting fired. I'm taking what's mine and I'm living off OnlyFans and I'm going to have fun this summer during the pandemic. <laughs> So your your eyes were already open to the uh, OnlyFans and producing online content, adult content. Like, was this something that was just kind of building inside of you, or was this something that you knew you were capable of? So I knew from a really really young age that sex work. I didn't know what it all meant, but I knew that that was like something for me. I had a really big attraction towards like sex symbols so like i was really intrigued by playmates um and like like pamela anderson megan fox like all these like celebrity sex symbols right. i just thought they were so cool and i idolized them especially playmates like i was so big into girls next door and i was like oh my god like they're so cool i want to be just like them and right. uh, paris hilton nicole ritchie were huge influences for me and um, so I didn't really know what like a sex worker meant or what it entailed. So I didn't even porn like while well, I watched it, but I wasn't like, oh, that's going to be me. But I thought it was really cool. Right. So when the pandemic actually happened, one of my best friends who is a, a well-known touring musician, um, he was like, you, you need to get on OnlyFans. And I'm like, oh, my God, you're crazy. He's like. I'm around all these OnlyFans girls and Instagram models. He's like, you could do exactly what they're doing. You're already posting this stuff on Instagram. Why don't you make money off of it? Mm. So I made an OnlyFans account in 2019 and never used it. I was so scared. Mm. And then one day when he said that, I was like, you know what? You're right. I could be making money off the stuff I'm giving away for free. So I tried it out. And it popped off like right away. So I was like, okay, this is really cool. The feedback was amazing. Like it was people from like my high school that were like following and paying for stuff and just giving me like the most respect I have probably ever received in my life. Like genuine love and respect. And I was like, I feel really beautiful doing this. Mm. And I did it for the whole pandemic. And once everything kind of started to lift, I was in Pennsylvania at the time. We were heavily shut down. Like they almost martial lawed us up there. Ooh. And um, I was like, I love this. I want to do something more that's on the lines of this. So I became a stripper. And then I 
was really successful at stripping that I relocated myself to Florida. It was just more of a, um, uh, inner child calling that I was like, I need to go to Florida. Like I've always loved that since I was a little girl and I'm in a position where I can make it happen. So I did. And my, uh, neighbor at where I moved into happened to be Shay Fox. Um, she really? became, yeah, she became a, like a best friend of mine. We are best friends to this day. Um, she got me in the industry. She actually, uh, she, we had not spoke. Um, somebody in our community was like, Hey, have you like met this girl? Like you guys have the same dogs. Um, you guys should like me. And she, I, I guess found my Instagram and she had reached out and was like, Hey girl, like I see you do only fans. Like, would you like to take some pictures? I was also modeling in mm. Florida mm. at that time. So she had saw like my post, all my modeling photos and, she was like, would you have any interest in just like taking some photos together? And I was like, I would love that. I had no idea who she was. No idea. Okay. I knew like I saw her and I was like, wow, like, she's so like intriguing looking. There, there's something really cool about her. And when we were at our photo shoot that day and asked, I'm like, so is this what you do? Like you just do OnlyFans? And she was like, I'm retired from porn. And I was like, what? <laughs> she's like, yeah, yeah I've, I've been in porn for like 10 years. I've been retired for a few years now. And I'm mm. like, no way i was like no i actually have like a lot of interest in the industry i'm 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 very curious like how do you get in and she's basically she said if you're serious about this i will get you in yeah but you have to be serious because i have a reputation i'm like i would not do you wrong i think two days later she's like here's an agency they want to sign you and i was like no way so yeah, we sat down together and read through my contract and she goes, I think you're good to go, girly. This looks like a good deal. And here I am. <laughs> wow. Like almost kismet. Yeah. Like just everything just kind of fell together like a well stacked or a well lined up set of dominoes. That's amazing. You know, and the coolest thing too is looking back, all of these things happen in the month of April. So I fired up OnlyFans in April, mm. and then the following year I became a stripper in April, and the following year I became a porn star in April. Well, not a porn star off the bat, but yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean. Got into porn in April, and I'm like, April is apparently a special month for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's the month where I just build. <laughs> Start buying lottery tickets in April. <laughs> in April, yeah, <laughs> for real. <laughs> it's, it's interesting because, uh, a lot, a lot of people who I've talked about in not just the adult industry, but a lot of different industries, when they're taking a chance on themselves and making that major step from out of the nine to five into their dream job or something that is out of the norm, yeah. it generally is the community and the support that helps them get to that point. Do yeah. you feel that is still present within your circle right now? Yeah, actually, I just recently, not too long ago, I tweeted out. I think it was actually during my recovery from my my boob job. So that was a very emotional time for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I I just the amount of people going through that surgery, people that I don't talk to in this industry, just reaching out. Are you OK? How are you doing? Do you need anything? Is there anything I can help you with? I've been through this surgery before. Being in this industry is the first time I've ever felt a sense of community in my whole life. Like I have always more so felt like an outcast, like I didn't belong or I didn't deserve to be with a specific group of people or doing a specific thing. Yeah. But being in this industry, I have been surrounded by the, some of the most amazing people. I have built some of the best friendships I have ever experienced in my life. And it's only been two and a half years of this, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's it's definitely the friendships and the love and respect that come from this are incredible. It's actually just talking to somebody out on the beach earlier about just how welcoming this industry can be. Really? So yeah. What was that? Was that oh. much of a shock? Well, like once you made the the proverbial step across the, th the it threshold, it kind of was because yeah. I'm like God. Like there are just so many established, huge people in this industry that. I'm so fortunate to even just kind of share space with. Mm. And then to find out they're like actually really nice people was just like, wow, like this is so amazing. Just have that because I do feel like it, in our society today, there, there's not a lot of nice people out there anymore. Right. So it's kind of nice to be in a career where 
we just kind of get each other. Yeah, it, 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 I can understand that completely. I've been like, never stepped foot in the adult industry, but I have worked in different uh, industries where you're metaphorically in the shit. Like it, long yeah. days, it's a hard job. It's, it's not a nine yeah. to five, it's not an office thing. And you build a camaraderie, you build uh, almost like a, a makeshift family. And it is yeah. that connection, that community that, that happens when you're in the middle of something, be it stressful or enjoyable, but still uh, kind of exclusive that that sort of support team just develops. Yeah. 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 It's, it's definitely amazing and very rewarding. And, you know, of course it, there can be a little bit of cattiness, but that's just life. You know, that's no matter where you go, you're going to find it. But yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a, an amazing place to be. <laughs> I'm very happy. So in a matter of two years and change, you I'm just reading off the, the list here because there is a list. Uh, <laughs> you've, you've worked with uh, Brazzers, Naughty America, Evil Angel, uh, Inked Vixens, Triple X, Cherry Pimps, My Per Family, and the list goes on and on <laughs> and on and on. Yeah. How busy is your schedule week to week? You know, it, it's hit or miss. It's definitely, um, this industry is an unpredictable place, um, as is anything when you kind of work for yourself or you do work for yourself, it's unpredictable. Uh, there are weeks where I'm shooting five scenes. There's weeks where I'm not doing anything at all, yeah. um, which is nice. And that's one of the driving points that pushed me to be in the sex worker industry is it's a work-life balance and it's so rewarding that you actually get a little bit more life than work yeah um and for me like living at a leisurely pace is very healthy for me so it's kind of nice to have those like dips and like i'm working a lot and then i have all this downtime and then i work a lot again and it just kind of comes and goes in waves and it's it's nice so mm. I do love that. <laughs> I don't know if you've had a chance to, uh, or un had the unfortunate chance of experiencing this situation, but it seems as though uh, among a certain group of people, uh, mostly women influencers on Instagram, they're getting backlash for tattoos, uh, amount of tattoos, design of tattoos. Uh, like you are covered in absolutely beautiful art, and in fact, you're <laughs> you. you're kind of. Uh, from what I can tell from your Instagram feed, you're known for this beautiful piece that's straight on your abdomen. Uh, how, <laughs> yeah. do you, how, how do you choose uh, the art that goes on to your skin and how do you deal with any sort of pushback from anyone? So I definitely, I when I first started getting tattooed, which was, I've been getting tattooed for four years, but I have not gotten tattooed for two years being in my industry. Right. Um, and I definitely expected to get a lot of like weird responses to my body, but I never have. It's I, actually like I've, it's been great the way people treat me being as tattooed as I am mm. um, in my industry and outside and just the real world. It's, it's really nice, but it's funny though because I always I thought going into porn that like tattoos were less favored, um, and I still honestly think that it is because there are companies that they that just that they don't want that. It's just that's not their vision. Right. But I've actually been extremely fortunate to become as successful as I have in mainstream being as tattooed as I am because. I definitely think that it can be challenging to look like this because, I mean, to be honest, we don't really look like the girl next door. Like <laughs> we are not very innocent looking. We're quite exotic. It does take away from that innocence, you know, but there are some awesome companies out there that they don't care um, and they'll cast you anyways because mm. they know that like you're a good performer. It doesn't change how you perform. So yeah. And then as far as like how I choose the artwork, I just, I have a love for like Middle Eastern culture. Um, so a lot of my work is actually inspired from their artwork. Oh. So I honestly, I just kind of roll with their artwork and the patterns that they have created. And that's just basically how I do it. I'm like, okay, well, I like that pattern. Let's put it on me somewhere. <laughs> so there, there, yeah. is, there, there is no, there is no wrong way. Uh, like 
if, if I could relate, my girlfriend, uh, beautiful, covered head to toe in different styles, different tattoos. Uh, she's had a couple of cover ups. But like she's been getting tattooed uh, for years now. Like you, she hasn't gotten a, a fresh tattoo in quite some time. My one and only tattoo, it took me nine years to come up with the idea, another four <laughs> years to finally follow through with it. And this is the one and only thing that I have. I love it. It's great. But like this is independently mine. My girlfriend, like yourself, like some of them are meaningful and original. Other ones are inspired by other designs. And yeah. like some of them are just flat out like, I want that. And going into a yeah. tattoo parlor, right? So that's basically this arm. This arm is what I refer to as my impulse arm. This is the arm that's kind of gotten me through being in the middle of work where I just have that itch. And this is basically, it's just like, oh yeah, I like that. Just slap it on me. Good old fashioned. Um, that's basically therapy. what this arm is dedicated to is just the straight impulses and. I mean, all of it pretty much is impulse, but there is like a little bit more of a, a push to the significant art that I have because yeah. it's what I am most like attracted to. Yeah. And I only have two that actually have real meaning to them. Everything else really is just purely impulse. And a lot of people never buy that when I'm like, no, 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 I'm just impulsive. They're like, well, no, like there has to be a reason. I'm like, no, there's no. literally no reason. <laughs> I just, I had the money and I wanted to do it and I'm really impulsive. And I like to do things to myself. So basically that's all that's it's there for. Yeah. <laughs> There's really it, no meaning except for two of them. Yeah, one yeah. is a tribute to my dad and the other one's my spirit number. <laughs> there you go. Really not that in depth either. <laughs> it's just good old fashioned ink therapy. That's all it yeah, is. I mean, basically it did. It took a breakup to create me into this. <laughs> so it really was therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In the, in the adult industry, uh, it is when you're on set, when you're in the middle of a scene, it is between you and your partner. And something that really isn't, I don't think, touched on a whole heck of a lot is the communication between you and your partner. Yes, you have to uh, pay attention to the director. Yes, you have to know where the camera is. Yes, you have to make sure you don't fall off the fucking couch. But <laughs> the the communication... It gets slippery, by the way. Sorry? <laughs> it gets slippery, by the way. I don't doubt that at all. <laughs> there, uh, in... in you got me on a tangent here. In my old show, whenever we refer to an injury in the middle of sex, we'd call that a gold star. Plenty of gold stars in my life. But anyway, um, you, the communication between you and your partner at the time is imperative. Mm -hmm. How do you create that? And is, has there been a time where communication was the utmost important for that moment? Yeah, so we um, basically, it's what we kind of refer to as like our boundary checklist. Right. Um, most of the companies will provide us with a physical checklist and it is a long list of things. And you just it, you just state your do's and don'ts. Right. Um, we actually do it on camera. They will film us going over our boundaries. Um, so most of the time, that's kind of how it's done. There's a little bit of a, it's kind of formal. Mm -hmm. um, other companies though, there might not be like a checklist, but there will be a discussion prior to shooting. So we basically just, again, state our do's and don'ts. I'm a pretty open book, so I'm very easy going. Oh yeah, just do what you want, I don't care. Right. <laughs> I have a few things that I'm like, don't do that. But we basically just have a discussion before filming. And then of course we have cues in shooting where if a boundary is being crossed or if something is uncomfortable, we can state our cue and we stop, we cut and uh, do what we need to do to, to correct that. I haven't honestly been in situations where I've needed to stop anybody from doing anything that was uncomfortable for me. Mm. Um, I have been injured, but honestly, I didn't know it until days later that I was actually dealing with an injury. Uh, you know, because in the moment, there's so much going on that I feel like a lot of times, at least for me, I haven't noticed that something is actually feeling weird. Whether it was or wasn't, I, don't, I have no idea. But days later, I'll be like, oh god why does my butt feel like that like <laughs> and then i'm like oh well that would explain i have a massive tear in my ass crack or my asshole you know <laughs> so it, it's something that you just don't realize until after the fact and most of the time it's days later in my own case <laughs> so no, that, that's that's fair some some of the best injuries are like yeah exactly that days later like the fuck did that 
<laughs> yeah, like, how does that happen? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god damn it was that pile driver <laughs> <laughs> you know thinking back going like wait oh yeah yeah, yeah that's fair <laughs> uh have you ever found yourself um and it, it, this is a, a something like i i would hope was a bragging point for you have you ever found yourself uh in a situation where you've had your partner lose control or get lost in the moment Oh, yeah. With you. yeah is that oh, yeah. is that a goal or is that something that happens it's not a goal but it's definitely something that happens yeah <laughs> i definitely had i mean i can definitely think on one scene for sure where i like left work and i was like what just happened like did i was that work or like was <laughs> that like a personal thing it happens it really does <laughs> cool so and it's it's you know, honestly, though, it makes for an awesome scene because, like, I know that scene in particular, that scene still gets talked about today. And I, that was one of my original scenes, what? like okay, one what? of my very first big scenes that I'd shot. And it still gets talked about today. OK, what was the so, scene, if you don't mind? It was uh, actually it was a Naughty America scene that I had shot. And, yeah, we just had amazing chemistry. So, but yeah, I definitely left that day and I was like, whoa, <laughs> I think I have a crush. <laughs> I that's, certainly had a crush. <laughs> that's a good day at work. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I mean, you really do. And that's, uh, that's one of the beautiful things though about this industry is it's, this is like a two part thing is that mm. we do get to work with people that we have great chemistry with, which makes for an awesome work day. Mm. And then also too. I had a second point to this and I'm losing track on that. I had another point, but I forget now. <laughs> <laughs> if it comes back, I can edit it in. It'll come back to yeah, me. Yeah, exactly. I'm losing it now. <laughs> <laughs> thinking on all that damn chemistry. <laughs> yeah, just thinking back to that scene. Got like, me a little hot that was... now. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I was gonna say though, it's you know, it's an industry though where we we can have those moments mm. and we can all come into the same room and nobody's crying like you fucked her you know like yeah. no one's crying like yeah we've all fucked each other you know and it's, it's beautiful we can enjoy it at times sometimes there are real work days where you gotta act a little bit but mm. it's it's nice that we can have that like where we can, we can work with everybody and we can have chemistry with who we have it with and we can all share space at an event or something later and it's it's fine you know there's no drama yeah about who fucked you i mean occasionally that does happen but on a regular occasion i don't feel like it does yeah. no. <laughs> that's fair i would hope that it doesn't happen too too often at all i don't feel like it does but <laughs> <laughs> that's just to have my take on it yeah no it's fair absolutely <laughs> everyone's experience is different yeah <laughs> Uh, a couple of questions from uh, a few of your fans as well as uh, people on my Patreon, if you don't mind. Okay. Uh, off of my Patreon, a gentleman who has the name of Scythe Kaizen asks, uh, what skills, if any, equally translate across all of your hobbies and careers? We kind of talked about this earlier with that uh, scene where your pastry chef skills uh, were brought front oh, and yeah. center. Yeah, but has there been any other time where that crossover sort, sort of happens? Well, I mean, actually, kind of going back to when I was real little, <laughs> my family actually, my whole life, they were like, you're going to grow up and be an actress. Like, you're going to be an actress. I've always been a drama queen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And while they were right, I don't think they, like, actually meant a porn actress. Um, that's just kind of how it happened. But, yeah, I mean, I guess I've always kind of been really good with, like, acting and just the dramatics and all that. I've always been a pretty theatrical person. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess kind of going back to my whole family saying, yeah, you're going to be an actress one day kind of translates now because I'm definitely an actress. <laughs> Just, I don't think they actually were thinking like, you know, porn or sex and all that. But <laughs> Acting is acting. You're performing. Acting so. is acting. Absolutely. There are days where we have a script. So <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Crystal on... Um, Patreon asks, uh, I love how you are so confident on Instagram. I love how you just shine in front of the camera. This is very flattering. Uh, how yeah. how does one learn how to portray that confidence? I'm doing my best, but I feel as though you have it down naturally. It really, and this is going to sound kind of like kooky, but it really took what I would refer to as like a spiritual awakening. Hmm. 
um, which was actually kind of during the pandemic. I mean, all we really had at that time was time. Right. You know, there was nothing to do. It was a lot of time spent with yourself. I mean, I actually started that year off severely depressed, as I think a lot of people did, because we were going through some really trying, challenging, and different times. Um, but yeah, it, it took a lot of time with me mm. and me really just sitting with myself and getting real with myself and just saying like, I really don't want this in life, but I want this and really just manifesting the things that I wanted. I'm, I'm a pretty spiritual person. I believe in a lot of the universe and the power of all that and stuff. So. I, I really do like a lot of like manifesting and grounding exercises to kind of center myself on the things that I want. And it really just, you have to kind of create a little bit of a, a harsh reality for yourself. And just, you gotta be really real with yourself. I think one of the things to becoming really confident is building a solid relationship with yourself. You gotta be okay with just being with you. Mm. And once you kind of be okay with that, I feel like that confidence really starts to come out because you know who you are at that point in time. So it just really took a lot of time being with me and not focusing on everything else going on in the world. So, and it, I actually like had to cut myself back from a lot of things too. Like, you know, activities that I was regularly doing with friends. I'm like, this isn't really serving any great purpose in my life. And this is not going to contribute to me being the best version of myself. So it also took a lot of um, elimination, process and elimination. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah, no, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. No, <laughs> I hope that was a, made sense and not too in-depth. <laughs> no, no, it, that is the most honest answer, like to be confident in oneself. You have to get to know yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. That gotta just really spend a lot of time with yourself and get real. Stay yeah. disciplined. Stay disciplined. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, a question I've been asking my guests over the past uh, little while here is what is their first paying job? What is yours? Ooh, mine was I was busing tables. <laughs> that was not a waitress, but just kind of like the <laughs> cleaning up after everybody. Um, I had that job when I was, I think I was, well, I just turned 16. So okay. I know my parents were like, well, you're 16, you're getting a job now. I was like, oh, are you sure? Like, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> you know, I go to I go to school and everything. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, no, we already got you the job. My parents went and got me a job while I was like at school one day. And they're like, all right, we're taking you to work. And I'm like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> <You're> like, what? <laughs> um, so I did that for a little while. And then I learned um, you can quit. So I quit. <laughs> <laughs> I quit because I learned that that was an uh, actual thing. Yeah. yeah. I called my mom. I was like, hey, mom, can you come pick me up? She's like, your shift isn't over. I was like, no, I quit. She's like, what do you mean? And I'm like, <laughs> I quit. <laughs> it, it wasn't your job to take anyway. You were given the job. So, oh. yeah. So, yeah, I was just basically cleaning tables, topping off people's waters, things like that. I hated it. <laughs> uh, so we're, we're recording this on uh, June the 3rd. This weekend, you have a bit of a busy schedule. Uh, what's going on? Um, well, I'm actually, I'm in the Keys right now. I'm actually going to go home tomorrow, though. Yeah. Um, so I'm kind of just enjoying a little bit of downtime. I, I do live in Florida, so yeah. kind of trying to enjoy a few things before it gets too brutally hot here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, before we're all just stuck inside for the summer. Right. Um, but yeah, otherwise, honestly, it's, it's a little bit of a quiet week for me this week. Okay. I'll probably be dancing. Okay. I'll probably dance this weekend. So I do have that on the agenda to so go in the strip club. Yeah. And shake some booty. <laughs> uh, As I actually still strip, so. Well, good. Um, I'll be doing that. Uh, according to my notes, um, and I could be wrong, I'm sorry, but uh, the uh, you'll be at the an expo on Saturday at the Sahara Hotel. Oh, yes. So I am actually up for two awards for the Alt Porn Awards. I got nominated for uh, Best Female Actress of the Year, I think is that category. Um, and then Premium Social Media Star. Um, I will actually not be going. I was supposed to be going. Okay. Um, but I had a little bit of a change of plans. And I am not going to head out to the West Coast. But it was on the agenda gotcha. to do. Fair yeah. Enough. 
So if uh, people want to follow you on social media, I guess the best place to go really is uh, to your uh, snippet feed, snippetfeed.co slash it's Cassidy Lux, correct? Yeah, yeah. But all of my handles across the board, it's Cassidy Lux, all three words. It's Cassidy Lux, Instagram, Twitter, OnlyFans, TikTok, Pornhub, many vids. Anywhere you can type a handle in, you will find that handle. <laughs> Thanks for making it to the end of this episode. Big thank you to you for watching or for listening or for checking out my website, themediajack.ca. There is where you can find other episodes, other content that I create as well. A link to the Patreon where you can support my show, all my work directly. Also, where you could submit ideas, suggestions, or maybe you want to ask a future guest a question. Patreon is where you can go for all of that and so much more. And also get a shout out, just like Red Wolf Dawn, our executive producer for this month. Big thank you to you once again. And check out themediajack.ca. The merch is there. You can get a really comfortable shirt like this, supporting the Media Jack or my partner, the iron bikini, or maybe you just want to get yourself a good mug or a gym shirt or something else that tickles your fancy, themediajack.ca. Take care.